Everybody is worried about coronavirus, and there is a ton of misinformation uh, that is floating around, that has been floating around from the very beginning, and uh, a lot of it just isn't true. And so one of the things that we want to do here at The Damage Report is to spread as much accurate information as possible, but also to bust the myths that are already starting to spread. Uh, JR, um, we've got 10 of these that we're going to go through. Um, <laughs> before we jump into that, though, I am curious, have you been hearing anything, perhaps on social media or anything, anything that strikes you as inaccurate or crazy that's been bothering you? I've actively avoided it. i got to be honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, I won't read what any, anything anyone says that's not on the official, reputable government website. Like, there's government officials that I won't listen to, yeah. as we've already talked about. Um, but, you know, you have to see something directly from California <clears throat> Health board or the cdc you know those places see the information but so any of the craziness that's happening i have actively avoided I'm not sure probably a good call I, I i did hear that was it is either sense of smell or hearing is a new symptom did you hear this oh yeah 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 it was something about if it's uh if your sense of smell has been destroyed then that is an indication that you have it, which um, I don't have that as one of the 10 that we're going to deal with here. Um, yeah. But I, I have a feeling that that is probably not going to end up being true. Uh, and so perhaps that'll be on the next installment. Um, yeah. But with that, why don't we jump into some of these? Uh, the first you might have heard is that masks don't actually help at all. Um, the truth is that viruses can also transmit through the eyes, and tiny viral particles known as aerosols can penetrate masks. So a mask is not necessarily foolproof. You can get it in other ways, things that are not covered by the mask. And if the mask is not seated correctly, like with the, the N95 masks, um, people are trained in how to make sure that there is a good seal to make sure that nothing um, gets around it. But masks are effective at capturing droplets, which is a main transmission route of coronavirus. And some studies have estimated a roughly five-fold protection versus no barrier alone. So the idea that masks don't help at all is a myth. The idea that if you have a mask on, you can't get it is also a myth, by the way. They are an important tool for protecting people, especially healthcare workers, but they are not the solution. But they are something. Yeah, there's, there's, there's lots of things you use for protection that if you don't use it correctly... Of course, it voids the protection. Number one, condoms. We know how that works. Yep. That's why there's the sex education classes that I hate to make it political, but many people in the country don't want us to have, um, where people will teach folks the right way to have protected sex. Because if there's many people who don't know what the hell they're doing, and if they apply it incorrectly, it doesn't matter that you tried to use the condom. You didn't use it right, so mm -hmm. it didn't work. Same thing with this uh, in some aspects. But I mean, I've seen people out and about. That, that are worried about um, the way people are in masks and it freaks people out. Um, it should be somewhat comforting because it's a layer of protection. I get that it's different, but it's a layer of protection. Whether or not it's foolproof or not, it's something. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to, this is sort of similar to the, the sense of smell thing that you were talking about. Uh, the myth is if you can hold your breath for 10 seconds, you're okay. <laughs> um, that was actually spread on Fox News a couple of weeks ago by Geraldo. Uh, turns out it's not true, according to Dr. Robert Laguerre Atmar of Baylor College of Medicine, who says when someone has an acute viral infection, it can be difficult to take a deep breath and not cough because the airways are irritated. Being able to hold your breath for 10 seconds doesn't mean someone doesn't have coronavirus. So like, <laughs> that should really go without saying, but... wait. Like okay, something could be sort of an anecdotal test. It is not foolproof. And that is not a way to know or not know that you have coronavirus. Okay. Cause I'm else, they're wasting a lot of money on these tests. If that's yeah. all you need. I bet, I, so this, this is an indicator of whether or not you have, okay. Cause I thought they were saying, if you're out and about and you see someone and you pass by them, hold your breath for 10 seconds as you walk by them and you won't get you. I thought that's what this was saying. Like oh. I see you walking down the street and I'm like, man, that guy, John looks like he's infected. <gasps> So if I, I hold it for 10 seconds, then maybe I won't, maybe you won't splatter it in my face. Yeah. Well, like, like we said, even with a mask, you can still get it in, in, in your eyes and all that. That said, I'm not saying I don't hold my breath <laughs> when I go by someone, but I also stay more than six feet away. So bear that in again, mind. <clears throat> again, you, you, you go on with at least trying something. You're trying something. Try anything, you know. Um, but you don't go around telling people that this is how it works. Exactly, that's exactly. And that's why on all of these, this is not my opinion on the myth. I'm going with doctors and health professionals. So mm -hmm. one is, um, this one was spread not by Geraldo, but someone arguably as important, uh, spread by Donald Trump. Uh, the myth is that COVID-19 will fade as soon as the weather gets warmer, which sort of misses the fact that on our planet, 
some parts of the world are warm even when other parts are cold. I don't know why people don't understand that. But anyway, uh, Dr. Mohammed Sajadi of the University of Maryland School of Medicine says the virus might have a harder time spreading between people in warmer tropical, tropical climes. But even if that's so, the fact that humans have no immune experience against the virus means it will probably continue to spread during the norm Northern Hemisphere summer, according to other experts. So some more difficulty in spreading is not the same thing as cannot be spread, and it's not the same thing as cannot devastate someone. So we might yeah. see something, but it is, it's present right now in hot climes as well. And so that is potentially something that could help a little bit, but it is not a solution to the problem we're in. Well, let's not forget what, it's, it's, the, it's March 24th. We only have like, you know, about a week before April's here, like our president said, and it's over. Yeah, it's over. Once April it's over. comes... I mean, the, the coronavirus is, it, it's def, it has a, has a calendar and it exits off each day like, oh, I got five days left. Damn. Yeah. Then I'm done. <laughs> it's just supposed to end at the beginning of April because that's when it, right? Yeah. Well, he also said, stay calm. It'll go away. It'll, it'll go away. So everybody <laughs> just has to stay calm. If you work yourself up into something, that could be a problem. Um, let's go to another one, also involving temperature. But this is the myth that uh, hand washing only kills coronavirus if water is hot. According to Dr. Uh, Michael Chang of the McGovern Medical School, when washing hands with soap and water, it's really the mechanical scrubbing action that's cleaning your hands. You can use warm or cold water. You have to be sure you wash or scrub long enough, at least 20 seconds, and completely dry your hands. So, look, if you feel more comfortable using hot water, use hot water. But you can use either. What you have to do is you have to make sure that you have something that can actually kill it, and you have to do it long enough, repetitively enough, for 20 seconds to make sure that it dies. Um, can I give a real quick, not even 20 seconds of my hand washing uh, sure. process? Let's so, see it. Yeah. So you start with the normal, right? You start in the, with, the, with the palms. Then, of course, go to the back. That's normal. Most people just do that. Ah, oh, you got to get each finger. I wrap that uh -huh. one. I wrap that one. I wrap that one. I wrap that one. I do it. I'm doing this way faster than I do. All 10. And then another clasp. Then uh -huh. the back again. Then I'm done. Um, and it's frustratingly long. Um, but... I mean, I think it's a small price to pay. Just yeah. saying. That's just my process. Maybe I'm missing some points. I don't know. Maybe I need one of those little brushes to hit my nail. <laughs> Under That's the what nails. I want. That's probably not one bad. thing I'm missing, actually. Yeah, we need a we need a bitsy, like your makeup bitsy. We need the, <laughs> the hand washing bitsy. Um and and uh it. yeah, if you if you get bored doing 20 seconds of hand washing, if it feels like time is passing really slow, um, I would bet that time passes slower on a respirator. <laughs> so bear that in mind. <laughs> Um, okay, here's another one, and uh, this is, there were a few uh, infographics put together by the WHO to spread, to um, fix some of these myths. I think that they designed it basically so that you could spread it on social. So one mm -hmm. was, can spraying alcohol or chlorine all over your body kill the new coronavirus? And they say no. no. Spraying alcohol or chlorine all over your body will not kill viruses that have already entered your body, which I think makes sense. Spraying such substances can be harmful to clothes or mucous membranes. You know, getting it in your eyes and your mouth, you probably don't want to do that. Um, and so, look, yes, using, like, uh, hand sanitizer on your hands is a good idea. If it's in your system, though, you can douse yourself in as much Tito's as you want. It's not going to cure you. So just don't waste your resources doing that. <laughs> Yeah, and once it's there, it's there. But uh, uh, yeah, and I guess, I mean, a lot of it, you have to keep your mental state calm too. So if, mm -hmm. if it helps that you wash your face with extra cleaners, okay. I guess, you're still cleaning go. dangerous in yes, your eyes, basically. Crazy. Yes. Uh, the next one, uh, are hand dryers effective in killing the new coronavirus? And they say, no, hand dry dryers are not effective in killing COVID-19. Um, they say, instead, uh, frequently clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand rub or wash them with soap and water. Once your hands are cleaned, you should dry them thoroughly by using paper towels or a warm air dryer. But the, the heat of the hand dryer alone is not going to kill the virus. Again, man, these myths, I'm catching them halfway through because they make so little sense. So I thought that meant wash your hands and instead of drying with like a paper towel, use a hand dryer. Mm. They just mean dry ass, dirty so COVID-19 hands. Yes. Stick your dry, dirty, freshly touched door handle hands under a dryer and that should just do it. Who came up with that? Somebody's saying it if the WHO is responding to it. Um, okay. Another one. And I, this I sort, of, I sort of understand where this comes from. Uh, the myth is that the coronavirus can be transmitted through mosquito bites. Uh, apparently, there is no evidence to suggest that it is being spread by mosquitoes. 
other things can be, and nobody likes to get bit by mosquitoes, so, you know, do whatever you need to do to not get yeah. bit, but you're probably not going to get the coronavirus from a mosquito. Yeah, let's not forget, there's other things that are going on, too, I, and I think this is worth saying, because I, I, I start to forget, too. Um, just because we're worried about this particular thing doesn't mean that other germs <laughs> are <Yeah>. gone, <laughs> you know? Just a general rule of thumb, just because you have to be avoiding this, make sure you avoid other things sticking your face on or anything else that even though it may not necessarily be infected with this particular virus, you might be getting sick in another way too. Number three, uh, bring, can you bring up that graphic with the, mosquito, the with mosquitoes? mosquitoes? Yeah, here you go. <laughs> if I see a mosquito that looks like that flying at me, I'm <laughs> petrified. <laughs> I think that mosquito looks scared, more scared of you than you are of it. <laughs> he <laughs> looks guess. He's got one of those, uh, one of those, uh, what was the mask movie with uh, Tom Cruise? What? Uh, oh, they, um, like, Mission like, Impossible? Uh, no, where they're like, it's... um. Oh, uh, oh, you're talking about... Uh, I, uh, mm, eyes Wide movie. Shut. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that <laughs> mosquito was definitely at a, at a high price orgy. <laughs> anyway, uh, where, did, where did this video get spun off the rails? <laughs> We're talking coronavirus. Um, I, will, I will throw in one, just because I've seen people sort of asking, like, I have antibiotics left over. Should I just take the antibiotics I have? No, this is a virus. That does not cure viruses. That's not the solution. Mm. Um, another one, again, sort of related maybe to your sense of smell one. Uh, the myth is that coronavirus patients will experience a drowning sensation, and that's one way you can self-diagnose. Um, many patients will not have a nasal infection at all, actually, let alone one that produces anything that could be described as a drowning sensation. Um, that one, that that's not a myth that I've seen, um, right. but apparently it is going around. And, and these sorts of, like easy ways to to know if you have it without being tested please do not rely on these things i know that it's it's likely that you can't necessarily get tested if you want to but don't do these sorts of things and then feel like well i was able to hold my breath or i don't have a drowning sensation so i guess i'm okay i can go hang out with grandma don't yeah. do that rely on doctors please yeah i mean there's also differences in a certain kind of cough that people have versus a cold cough or a flu cough all those things but you know what? Again, this is an offshoot of people's fear and not having enough tests available that they have to start self-diagnosing because that's what people just have to do. It's at a dire need. And then you have other problems that are built off of that, like misinformation. Yeah. It all begins from just giving people the right information from the beginning, which we failed at. Yeah. Um, one, and I understand where this is coming from, the myth is that COVID-19 only kills the elderly. Now, most people who are not elderly and do not have underlying health conditions will not become critically ill from COVID-19, but the illness still has a higher chance of leading to serious respiratory symptoms than seasonal flu. Um, so you might be less likely to die, but it can still kill younger people. It has, even as young as children mm -hmm. lately. Um, and in some of these states, something like 40 or 50 percent of the cases currently hospitalized are people who are very much in the sort of like millennial uh, category. You can still get sent to the hospital. You can end up on a respirator. And yes, indeed, you can die. You are at less of a risk, but that is not no risk. And so don't yeah. believe that like you're, you know, Superman and you can just go do whatever you want. I remember being 23 years old. And, and I guess the thought, I don't remember. I mean, if this happened, I was always slightly paranoid. So I don't think I'd have been one of the spring breakers. Um, but there was a sense of invention. And that was in physical things that didn't have to do with disease and viruses and stuff. So um, I get the mindset, but don't you see reality right in front of you? Number two, this is there's so many unknowns of this virus that we don't know how it's going to affect people later in life. If you're carrying now, maybe it, maybe it, uh, who, again, it's so many unknowns. I don't want to give any, like, any, any scary doomsday scenarios that are completely unfounded. Don't know anything else about it. So at this point, just try to avoid it. I'm not saying that. You know, if you've got it, you're doomed, but you don't know how it's going to affect you. Say you're 23, you get it now, and you're 56, hey, it's somehow associated with you and some makeup. Again, I don't probably not the case, but it's best just go ahead and follow the first place. Yeah, and, and you can always transmit to other people. So like Danny, Danny and, yeah. DeVito said on yesterday's show, you also have to worry about transmitting to other people. You could potentially get through it having it, having no or almost no symptoms, but you could still be transmitting it to other people. Right. Yeah. And so, I mean, you have to think, I mean, if you don't, it's square to say, it's, if you don't want to think about yourself, think about others. Mm. Absolutely not the way we operate in this country. So That's true.
Uh, and the final one, and it's a little bit of a downer, the myth is that a vaccine could be ready in just months. Um, but indeed, the incremental trials required before a commercial vaccine can be rolled out are a lengthy undertaking and an essential one to ensure that even rare side effects are spotted. A commercially available vaccine within a year would be quick. Um, and look, Trump doesn't care about the side. He's been very, I, I'm not just like trying to read his mind here in his addresses. He said, why are we worrying about these sorts of side effects when we can just roll it out? People need help. And so maybe he'll tell the FDA to just approve literally anything. Um, but even then it is going to take quite a while. So if your view of what the government should be doing, what we should be doing is contingent on or like tied to a belief that we only need a couple of months to get through to a vaccine, that is almost certainly not the case. And so you need to gird yourself for what could be a longer process to fix this thing. Yeah, we have to consider the side effect. I mean, if you look at those any of those commercials, when it comes to stomach pains, to restless knee syndrome, hair loss, there's side effects for any kind of medication. So especially when it comes to something as serious as this, don't know what those side effects could be. You'll see the fine print and quick talking guy on the commercial going, side effects, yeah. and you're going to die. So after all that, you know, that's just from those medications. And it's serious. So yeah, let's, let's take it serious. Uh, 100%.